different side to the story in Afghanistan and the founder of an animal rights charity in Kabul has urged the British government to help withdraw his staff from the area. Pen Farthing, a former Royal Marine Commando and founder of the Nauzad charity, has been trying to get all of his 25 staff from the charity, their families and more than 100 dogs and cats out of the country. Uh, well, we welcome Dominic Dyer, a leading animal welfare campaigner, to the programme. He's been campaigning for Mr Farthing and he joins us now. Dominic, good to see you. It's been a while uh, since we've Has. spoken. But look, this is a really heart-rending story. Um, and of course, you can assume that it won't just be this charity that is in this situation. It will be many charities where they have British nationals working on the ground in Afghanistan, uh, struggling to get safe passage out of the country. Absolutely. Um, you know, we have obviously focused on Nauzad and we're focusing on a charity that I've worked closely with and I have great respect for Penn Farthing. He's a real hero who I think showed incredible bravery and leadership over the last week in the most difficult conditions reporting from, from Kabul. And he's not going to leave his people or animals behind and we're going to get them home. You know, we launched the Save the Animal Rescuers campaign just over a week ago and Operation Arc is now up and running as a project to get his team and get those animals out of that very, very dangerous place. And I can't believe the level of public support we've got and that the political support we're now getting and movement in government as well. Millions of people literally around the world are supporting this campaign. Uh, we've got, you know, MPs supporting us. Trudy Harrison, for example, who's PPS, the Prime Minister, has done an amazing job supporting us over the last few days. Zach Goldsmith as Minister has been amazing. We've got Victoria Prentice in DEFRA, Robert Courts, Department of Transport, Leah Doherty, Ministry of Defence. All these ministers are now working to actually get our people out of that danger zone with the animals and back to Britain. And, you know, I can't thank the public enough because this is a very difficult position for the government. There are many people that need rescuing. But what we're saying here is that we have a unique set of people, vets, vet nurses that were empowered and trained to protect animals in the most difficult conditions and their dependents. And we want to bring those people back because there's careers and jobs here for them. Huge support we've had from the British Veterinary Association, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons and vets and vet nurses and businesses up and down the country to offer them jobs and training and support. They will not be a burden on the taxpayer. And indeed, we're actually got a, a plane and a significant amount of money that's been raised by a wealthy US investor, Spencer Haber in New York with his H3 Foundation to get into Kabul. So we are ready to go, but we're now looking for the British government to give us access and clearance to put that plane down on Kabul airport to rescue Penn and his animals. Yeah, Dominic, I was going to ask you about that. I was going to ask you about the practicalities. We're talking about 25 staff, their family and more than 100 dogs and cats. I mean, practically, we've all seen the scenes outside the airport. It's almost impossible to get in now, isn't it? Even if you've got the paperwork um, and, and the correct visas that you need, how would you practically move those animals and those, that amount of people? Or are you not sure on those plans yet? Well, the plans we can't discuss with you for obvious yeah. reasons. I'll say one thing. I, I would never underestimate Penn Farthing's ability to get those people into that airport. And if anyone can do it, it's him. But we're also obviously working with the British government. We're talking to the American government as well, as we have Americans actually supporting this project as well. And we're saying also, talking when I get off this call today to the UN in Geneva as well, who've taken an interest actually in helping, both with possibly getting the plane on the ground as a humanitarian flight, but also assisting in getting a corridor through that city. And to be fair, even the Taliban, I hope, will realise that there's such interest in this group of people that there should be no benefit in them in any way trying to prevent them to leave. So I think there's a huge amount of public support to get this group out of that country safely. But I'm not underestimating for a moment how difficult that is and the tragedies we're seeing and the difficulty that our armed forces currently face mm -hmm. in trying to deal with that situation. Yeah, and Dominic, look, you won't, you'll forgive me for playing devil's advocate now, but there'll be people watching this who admire that you're advocating on behalf of this charity. Uh, they know the work that you do uh, for animal welfare uh, and admire it. But we'll say to you, when we're hearing the Defence Secretary saying no nation will be able to get everybody who's eligible out of the country, when we're hearing that flights could stop as early as Tuesday out of Afghanistan in terms of evacuating British people, there will be people watching this who think it is not a priority to evacuate animals. Uh, any space on an aeroplane should be taken up by human lives. What would you say to that? 
Well, you know, I've been having those discussions with ministers last night because you can appreciate we are having those difficult discussions at right up to the prime minister level at the moment. But that's two things that are very clear. This is the only humanitarian flight that will go into Kabul in this crisis, the only one. All the flights that have gone in are basically funded by the taxpayer, i.e. commercial airlines through governments to get those planes on the ground or their military flights. This plane is not paid for by the taxpayer. This plane has capacity to take over 200 people out. We have 68 I probably will be on that plane to load it. We've only got an hour and a half to get those animals and people on to get it off that runway. But we will take over 100 Afghans, which is why we're talking to the UN and British government. This is a massive humanitarian effort paid for by private money to get people out. Those, the hold of that airplane will not be filled with people. You can't put them in, but you can put the dogs and cats in. I can tell you now, and you know damn well, that there are airplanes leaving there with no one on board. There's no, nothing in the hold. So no one, no one can argue with us that this is not a humanitarian mission, which is why the United Nations are taking such an interest. And believe me, there's no one in this government or in Whitehall that are gonna stop us putting that plane on the runway and getting those people and those animals out of there. This has been an absolute tragedy. And, you know, the president of the United States should hang his head in shame. It will haunt him for the rest of the time what's gone on in that country. We have pulled the rug from under it. But what we're going to do in a small way is rescue these people. And the animals are going to come with us. And yes, there will be film directors looking at this in the future and books written about it. But it'll be one good thing that will come out of this tragedy, which is why so many millions of people suddenly care about Operation Ark, and which is why we're going to make this a reality. Well, thank you very much, Dominic Dyer, the animal welfare campaigner, uh, writer and founder of the Rescue of the Animal Rescuers campaign there. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Well, let's stick with.